guess what? There was a little Persian seven years old kid at that seminar, seven years old. He thought it's going to be a nice challenge. He walked in a hotel and he found a priest, a pastor from New Jersey. I looked at his card, he had about seven or eight different titles. And I understood he had a large crowd, they had also a seminar there. So he invited him to the argument. And this is a, an important pastor. He, he later him, himself said that he was a pilot in Vietnam. He told his life story. And based on that conversation that we had over there, I wish I could film it, but I couldn't do it because it was the Sabbath. He asked him about four or five issues, not 30, 50 that we dealt with tonight. Uh, well, the whole conversation was maybe 40 minutes. And then this was the reaction of the priest. May God, may God be my witness. He hold his hand like the, his head like this, and he say, "Oh my God, my mother will kill me when she find out I converted to Judaism." <laughs> that was his answer. Yes, I'm serious. Word. Wait, 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 wait. Let me finish the story. Wait, wait, wait. You, you giving me? They're ignorant Christians. I agree. You've already admitted. I gave you a pastor. Jews. A pastor. So a pastor, not an ignorant Christian. Okay, all right, you answer you my question. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, okay, okay. If you think I'm about to convert, you're mistaken. I, you still did not answer the last question that I asked you. You, you stopped. You never gave me a chance. I did. You answered, but not to the point. You told me that if a person will come with a book, before I told you about the cave of Jacob, before I found you the source, I ask you, if a person will show you that the Twin Towers collapse in Brooklyn, is that an indication that this book can be by, given by God? You hesitated, but in the end you say, well, that will be the end of this book for me. Now, when I show you the source, you contradicted yourself completely. Oh, well, let me explain. Let me explain. Can I, do you think I can dig myself out of this hole now? I don't know, you got me pretty deep there. <laughs> The distinction that I wish to make is if there is no way to reconcile this, this mistake with what I believe the origin of the New Testament to be, then I've got a problem. But as with this case of Shechem, I do believe that there is a way to reconcile. I might not know right now, but I do believe there's an explanation. And also, what I try to explain is that there are so many compelling reasons to believe that the New Testament is God-breathed, along with the Old Testament. There's so many that I am mandated by, by logic and reason itself to believe that there must be some way to reconcile these disparate elements. I don't think that's a contradiction. Abraham, Tell me, from, from please, 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 please. I have to study that first. Okay. I don't know how to Fair answer enough. it. We say that in the beginning. But again, please. if, just think of your wife. If your wife has been faithful to you for 50 years, and somebody brings you a report and says that in some way she was unfaithful, are you going to believe that report? in light of 50 years of proven faithfulness. It's the same way with me in the New Testament and the same way a Christian. If it has proved itself to me in so many different ways, if the writers have proved themselves, you know, you ask the question, who would believe? It's easy for people to believe the New you Testament the because... Proof, but that's not the proper word to use. The oh, well, let me, let me talk. You well, please, look, give me a chance. Give me a chance. What you said was, there was every reason in the world for people to believe in Christianity. It's so easy. It took away the law. You know, why wouldn't people believe in it? But just think of the difficult things that pe people had to risk their lives in order to believe in the New Testament because it was the death penalty, as you point out, to believe against people's understanding of the Old Testament. And besides that, how could anybody believe in the the leader of the faith, Jesus Christ, dying on the cross, and there being any validity in that religion unless there were actual miracles that took place. Who would want to believe in somebody who was stripped naked and tortured to death? Who would want to believe in that unless there were compelling reasons? 
The reasons and proofs are complete two different things. There are many, many reasons why so many people in the world doing foolish things. Uh, the fact that uh, 60 percent of the youth smoke drugs or use LSD or cocaine doesn't mean that my children and your children also have to follow it because we both agree that it's not the proper life. So using a majority, what the people does, or so many reasons why people follow one person, I have news for you. I have a list of more than 50 false messiah here. Do you want me to start and tell you the life story of each one of them? It may change you from one to the other because they all claim what you just said. You know, I have a list of the last 2,000 years, there's books full of false messiah, even among Judaism. That one of them, everybody was sure that he's the messiah, and he turned that he died. And once he died, the rabbi said that was a false belief. It's impossible. You should know one thing, and I'm sure you do know, but for the crowd. The Bible say that El Elijah will come three days before the Messiah will appear and he will tell the entire nation to prepare for the arrival of the Messiah and the Messiah will save the Jews from all their agony and pain. Those conditions never happen in the life of Jesus. The Jews suffer since Jesus from the Christian church more than any other nations. Tens of millions of Jews were tortured and were forced in the time of the Inquisitions, forcing them, tear them away from their land, from their family, putting taxes on them, burning them with the Torah for the last thousand years in the name of the New Testament, even though the New Testament promised that is the religion of love. What kind of religions of love that claim that they have the truth will bring people and police and in the basements of churches all over history as you know in Spain and in Portugal and in many other countries and burn the Jews and tear their body to two halves in a wheel because they refuse to accept the New Testament. I never did, even though I'm a little strict, I have a reputation that when I come and argue with a non-religious Jew and try to make him religious, not everyone can use this direct approach. No problem, I respect his opinion, but I never use a wheel to rip him to two because he doesn't want to become a Shomer Shabbos. It never occurred to me, if I have the truth, I'm going to use common sense and proof. If I don't have what to offer, I'm going to hire a gangster to do the job. And that's what Muhammad did. What do you think? When he came up with the Quran, right away they started to murder people. Judaism is not a missionary religion. If any, we are opposed collecting Gentiles from the world and come adopt them into Judaism. The opposite, that's not our goal. It wasn't my intention with you and your friend here. The opposite, if you would consider it, it's your choice. Everyone has a free choice. May I respond? Please. If a Christian really knows their religion, if they and the simplest thing to recognize is that Jesus came as a Jew. All his apostles, all his followers were Jews. Everyone who wrote the New Testament, with per perhaps the exception of Luke, were Jewish. Anybody who realizes these facts, anybody who realizes what Paul says about the Jewish people, that the gifts and the calling of God cannot be revoked, anybody who really believes would never treat Jews like that. What does that mean? I well, I have to say, one second, never, wait a second. Never sadly, sadly, many aspects, in the name of Christ, many horrible things have been done. But please remember that, that, that Christianity, true Christianity, was hijacked for a long time, you know, within the Catholic Church. It was forbidden to translate the New Testament or the Bible itself into the vernacular, into the common language of the people. People were put to death, Christians were put to death for translating the New Testament. In other words, darkness had come over the entire Christian church establishment for long periods of time. But Christians who know their religion have to love the Jews. 
And so I have to apologize for those people in the name of Jesus who did what they did to the Jewish people. There is no reason for that. Okay, thank you for that. And uh, I would like to conclude. And first of all, I thank everyone that showed up and behaved in a nice way with patience. I want to remind everyone that the reason for this debate was all intelligence. He is trying to prove their side, we are trying to prove our side, we have questions about what they claim. Uh, in my opinion, I would like to conclude my side and then uh, Danny will conclude his side. In my opinion, and you have the right to judge according to what you just saw, in my opinion I presented a lot of questions and we are still have uh, time for him to come back with 15 or 20 questions that are not solved. Some of the contradictions and mistakes, if he will be able to answer them, then it will be maybe a point to re-meet again and, and hear the answers. But if he's not, for whatever reason, that pastor that I told you from eight years ago, he said to Dr. Betesh, give me three days. Are you still going to be in New York? He said, yes. In three days I'll get back to you. Until today, we li we're waiting for him. Uh, Dr. Betesh sent uh, him or somebody that affiliate with him, sent a letter to the Pope, the ex-Pope, about the question that I ask about King David descendants if if Joseph is not the father why did you waste a whole page to to describe his descendants we send it to the Pope he sent it to the Pope and the Pope ask he, send him an email back from the Vatican the answer to your question will be given by the father of the Church of Nativity in Bethlehem he will answer your question right away it's a question why the head Christian in the world don't know to answer this question. So when we, when he sent to to, that, to the father Joseph something, I don't remember his full name, in in a, in a church of nativity, the answer is, dear Jewish brother, the answer to your question is in the book, the birth of the Messiah. I'm sure you're familiar with that book, yeah? yeah no. So he he gave us a book, a name of a book. Dr. Betesh asked five experts to read the book, and looking and look in the entire book.